Hi first graders, let's go ahead and get started with chapter five, a party at the Quimby's. Saturday morning turned out to be cold and rainy. Beezus wiped the breakfast dishes for her mother and listened to Ramona, who was riding her tricycle around the house singing, copycat, 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 over and over at the top of her voice because she liked the sound of the words. Beezus and her mother finished the dishes and went into the bedroom to put clean sheets on the beds. Copycat, copycat, droned Ramona sing song. Ramona, why don't you sing something else, mother asked at last. We've been listening to that for a long time. Okay, agreed Ramona. I'm gonna have a party, she sang. I'm gonna have a party. Thank you, Ramona, that's better. Mother held one end of a pillow underneath her chin while she slipped the other end into a fresh case. You know, that reminds me, she said to Beezus. What would you like to do to celebrate your birthday next week? Beezus thought a minute. Well, I'd like to have Aunt Beatrice over for dinner. She hasn't been here for such a long time, and I'd like to have a birthday cake with pink frosting. Beezus smoothed the fresh sheet over the bed. She almost enjoyed helping Mother when they could talk without Ramona's interrupting all the time. The rain beating on the windows and Ramona's happy sing-song made the day seem cozy and peaceful. All right, that's exactly what we'll do. Mother seemed really pleased with Beezus' suggestions. It's a long time since we've seen Aunt Beatrice, but of course teachers always have a lot to do when school starts. Beezus noticed that Mother gave a little sigh as she smoothed her side of the sheet. She'll probably have more time now that the semester has started, and it really isn't that long before Thanksgiving and Christmas vacations. We'll see a lot of her then. Why, Mother misses Aunt Beatrice too, thought Beezus. I believe she misses her as much as I do, even though she never says so. Leaving Beezus with a new and surprising thought that grown-ups sometimes missed each other, Mother gathered up the sheets and pillowcases that had been removed from the beds and carried them to the basement. While she was downstairs, the telephone rang. Answer it, will you, Beezus? Mother called. When Beezus picked up the telephone, a hurried voice said, Th This is Mrs. Kemp. Do you mind if I leave Willa Jean while I bring Howie over for his this afternoon? J just wait a minute. I'll ask my mother. Beezus called down the basement stairs, repeating the question. Why, no, I guess not, Mother replied. Mother says it's all right, Beezus said into the telephone. Thank you, said Mrs. Kemp. Now I'll, Howie, stop banging. Have a chance to do something. Well, thought Beezus when she had hung up, things won't be quiet around here much longer. Howie, who was in Ramona's class at nursery school, was the noisiest little boy she knew, and he and Ramona often quarreled. Willa Jean was at that awkward age, too big to be a baby and not big enough to be out of diapers. You know, said Mother when she came up from the basement, I don't remember telling Mrs. Kemp that Howie could come over this afternoon, but maybe I did. I've had so much on my mind lately, trying to get the nursery school rummage sale organized. After an early lunch, Mother decided there would be enough time to wash everybody's hair before Howie and Willa Jean arrived. She put on her oldest dress because Ramona always squirmed and got soap all over her. Then she stood Ramona on a chair, made her lean over the kitchen sink, and went to work. Ramona howled, as she always did when her hair was washed. When Mother finished, she rubbed Ramona's hair with a bath towel, turned up the furnace thermostat so the house would be extra warm, and gave Ramona two graham crackers to make up for the indignity of having her hair washed. Then Beezus stepped onto the stool and bent over the sink for her turn. After Mother had washed her own hair, and before she went into the bathroom to put it in pin curls, she said to Beezus, Would you mind getting out the vacuum cleaner and picking up those graham cracker crumbs Ramona spilled on the rug? Beezus did not mind. She really liked running the vacuum cleaner, if her mother didn't make a regular chore of it. I'm going to have a party, sang Ramona above the roar of the vacuum cleaner. Then she changed her song. Here comes my party, she chanted. Beezus glanced out the window and quickly switched off the vacuum cleaner. Four small children were coming up the front walk through the rain. A car stopped in front of the house and three children climbed out. Two more were splashing in the street. Mother, cried Beezus, come here quick. Ramona wasn't pretending. Mother appeared in the living room just as the doorbell rang. One side of her hair was up in pink curls and the other hung wet and dripping on the towel around her neck. Oh my goodness, she exclaimed when she understood the situation. That explained Mrs. Kemp's phone call. Ramona, how could you? I wanted to have a party, explained Ramona. I invited everybody yesterday. The doorbell rang in time long and this time long and hard. There was the sound of many rubber boots jumping up and down on the porch. Mother, we just can't have a party with our hair wet, wailed Beezus. What else can we do? Mother sounded desperate. They're here and we can't very well send them home. Their mothers are probably planning to shop or something while we look after them. Ramona struggled with the doorknob and managed to open the heavy front door. Mrs. Camp stopped her car in front of the Quimby's and Howie and Willa Jean hopped out. I'll pick them up at four, she said gaily. I'm so glad to have a chance to get out and do some shopping. Mother smiled weakly and looked at all the children on the porch. Where do you suppose she found them all, whispered Beezus. I don't even know some of them. All right, children, Mother spoke firmly. Leave your wet boots and raincoats on the porch. I got a party, sang Ramona happily. 
Beezus, who had plenty of experience with Ramona and her boots, knew where she was needed. She started pulling off boots and unbuttoning raincoats. What on earth shall we do with them on a day like this, whispered Mother. Beezus grabbed a money boot. Hold still, she said firmly to its owner. They'll expect refreshment, she said. I know, said Mother. You'll have to put on your coat and run down to the market. Oh, no, you can't go out in this rain with your hair wet. Mother tugged at another boot. I'll have to see what I can find in the kitchen. Beezus and her mother herded the wiggling, squealing crowd in the front bedroom and went to work removing sweaters, jackets, caps, and mittens. In between, Beezus pulled three children out of the closet, dragged one out from under the bed, and snatched her mother's bottle that had snatched her mother's best perfume from another. All right, everybody out of here, Beezus ordered. When the last mitten was removed and her mother was hurried into the kitchen and hurried into the kitchen. We'll go into the living room and and do something, she finished lamely. Ramona, bring some of your toys out of your room. Bingle bungle bye, shouted Howie, just to make some noise. Bingle bungle bye, the others joined in with great delight. It was such a nice, noisy thing to yell. Bingle bungle bye, they screamed at the tops of their voices and they scampered into the living room. Bingle bungle bye. Howie grabbed the vacuum cleaner, turned on the switch, and charged across the room. I'll suck you up, he shouted. I'll suck everybody up in the vacuum cleaner. Bingle bungle bye, shouted the others above the roar of the vacuum cleaner. One little girl began to cry. I don't want to be sucked up by the vacuum cleaner, she sobbed. Willa Jean, looking bulgy because of her diapers and plastic pants over her overall under her overalls, clung to the chair and wept. Ramona appeared with her arms full of toys, but no one paid any attention to them. The vacuum cleaner was much more fun. I want to push the vacuum cleaner, screamed Susan, who lived in the next block. Ramona offered Susan her panda bear, but Susan did not want it. Ramona hit Susan with the panda bear. You take my bear, she ordered. This is my party, and you're supposed to do what I say. I don't want your old bear, answered Susan. Beezus tried to grab the vacuum cleaner, but Howie was too quick for her. The room was getting uncomfortably hot, so Beezus darted to the thermostat to turn on the heat. Then she dashed to the other side of the room and disconnected the vacuum cleaner at the wall. It died with a noisy groan. Suddenly, everyone was quiet, waiting to see what would happen. Hey, protested Howie, you can't do that. Beezus frantically tried to think of some other way to keep 15 small children busy and out of mischief. At least she thought there were 15. They didn't stand long enough for her to be counting. Where's the party? One little boy asked. Ramona appeared with more toys, which she dumped on the floor. This time she brought a drum. Howie quickly lost interest in the vacuum cleaner and grabbed the drum. Beza seized the vacuum cleaner and shoved it into the hall closet while Howie began to beat the drum. I am leading a parade, he said. You are not con contradicted, Ramona. This is my party. Susan snatched a pink plastic horn and tooted it. I'm in a parade too, she said. I want to be in a parade. I want to be in a parade, cried the others. That was it. They could play parade. Beezus ran to the bedroom and found a whistle and a couple of horns left over from a Halloween party. What else could she use in a parade? Flags, of course. But what could she use for flags? Beezus thought fast. She gathered up two yardsticks and several rulers. Then she ran to the front bedroom and snatched some of her father's handkerchiefs from a drawer. She had to move fast before the children grew tired of the idea. I want to be in a parade, screamed the children. Mother, help me, cried Beezus. Somehow Beezus and her mother got father's handkerchiefs tied to the sticks and distributed to the to the children who did not have noisemakers. Howie banged the drum. Follow me, he ordered, beginning to march. The others followed, blowing whistles, tooting horns, waving flags. No, screamed Ramona, who wanted to boss her own party. You wanted a party, Mother reminded her. If your guests want to play parade, you'd better join them. Ramona scowled, but she took a flag and joined the parade rather than be left out entirely of her own party. Playing parade was a wonderful idea, Mother smiled at Beezus. I hope it lasts. So do I, Beezus agreed. Bingle bungle bye, yelled the flag wavers. Howie led the parade, including a sulky Ramona, out of the living room, down the hall, through the kitchen and dining room, and back to the living room again. Willa Jean toddled around at the end of the procession. Beezus was afraid the parade might break up, but all the children appear, appeared to be delighted with the game. Into the bedroom, they marched and out again. Beezus opened the basement door. Down the steps, Howie led the parade. Willa Jean had to go down the steps backwards on her hands and knees. Three times around the furnace marched the parade and up the steps again before Willa Jean was halfway down. Beezus opened the door to the attic. Up the steps marched the parade. Stamp, 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 went their feet overhead. Stamp, stamp, stamp. Beezus remembered something Ramona had enjoyed when she was still in diapers. She lugged Willa Jean up the basement steps, sat her in the middle of the kitchen floor, and handed her the egg beater. There, don't step on her, she said to her mother. Thank goodness, sighed mother. Maybe they'll play parade long enough for us to fix something for them to eat. What do we give them, Beezus asked. Mother laughed. This is a wonderful chance to get rid of all that applesauce. Let's hurry and get it ready before they get tired of their game. Get the colored paper napkins out of the cupboard and, oh dear, what shall we do for chairs? 
They can sit on the floor, suggested Beezus, looking through the cupboard for napkins. I guess they'll have to. Mother took the applesauce out of the refrigerator. If we put a couple of sheets down for them to sit on, maybe they won't get applesauce on the rug. The parade tramped down the attic stairs and through the kitchen. But mother, said Beezus, when the drum and horns had disappeared into the basement again, the only napkins I can find are for St. Valentine's Day and Halloween. They won't do. They'll have to, said mother. Beezus spread two sheets in the middle of the living room floor. Then she went into the kitchen to help mother. She was tearing open three boxes of Fig Newtons. It's a good thing I bought these on sale last week, she remarked. Are we going to give them lemonade or anything to drink, she asked. Not on my living room rug. Mother rapidly spooned applesauce into dishes. Applesauce and fig newtons are bad enough. Maybe if we feed them right away, some of them will think the party is over and go home. Beezus piled fig newtons on two plates. I hope so. This many small children in the house on a rainy day is too much. The parade stamped across the attic floor again, and Mother had to raise her voice to make herself heard. It sounds as if they're coming through the ceiling. Let's catch them the next time they come through the kitchen and hand out the applesauce, Beezus shouted back. Then maybe we can get them to march into the living room. First graders, we'll finish up chapter five tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed it.